We know there's two kinds of it's famous Rebbe I'm going to share with you, and then maybe we'll have an appreciation of some of our history. There are two Yamam Tovim, we'll call them the Dirabonan. We have Purim and we have Hanukkah. And Purim and Hanukkah are vastly different, not just in the way we celebrate it, but in how we went about to reach our salvation. In Purim, Rahman got up, he wanted to wipe out Taf and Noshim Mechad, he wanted to kill all the men, the women, and Klai Yisrael didn't lift a finger. They didn't get their guns together and make a revolution and fight. They went to the base Medrash, they said Tillim, Sakra Eifa, they fasted, and the Yeshua came. On Hanukkah, on the other hand, when the Yavanim wanted to destroy the fabric of the Kedusha, of the spirituality of Klai Yisrael, so we find that the Chashmonon got up, Mila Hashem Elai, 13 people, however many it was, and they made a battle. They went out for battle. A whole different reaction. So Abu Khan says over, it's famous, but I like to bring it out, it says over from the Chavetz Chaim. He says in his time, they were dealing with the same two types of destructions at the same time. Hitler Yamach Shemai, what he was doing in Europe, was planning on doing at that time, <coughs> to wipe out Taf and Noshim. <coughs> and what Stalin Yamach Shemai also was planning on doing and did in Russia, in the Soviet Union, he calls it the Rishon Ho'adumim, the red, the red uh, Rishon. Uh, so what they were planning on doing in, 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 in communist Russia, with the help of the Yiddu, of course, the the uh, Yavseskas, these, these uh, Jewish youth, communist youth, they're always the ones known in it's known in the history. It's always the Jewish people that go on the wayside, the Hellenists that join in and make things much more difficult than they would have been. So with their help, in a few short years, they got rid of all, all in Yone, uh, Kedusha, no Mekvais, no Kashras, no family units anymore. They destroyed all Kaiser. And there were two different ways. And the Chavetz Chaim said, he actually sent a letter to Chaim, uh, to, to Chaim Moser, he wanted to do it. But the Chavetz Chaim said that we should get up, just like by the Chashmanoim, and we should go fight. Now, I'll tell you his exact quote in a minute, what he said. But he said there's two <coughs> different battles. There's a battle, when the battle is against the goof of a person, that's a mice, that's a Yad Hashem. That's a mice Hashem. Hashem is going out, and he wants us to do tshuva, so he goes out to, he puts a gzera on us. Haman puts a gzera to kill him. We have to do tshuva. Our f job is not to fight back. But then there's something called a maise sotan. Oh. Maise sotan means the way the Rebbe Shalom created the world, he gave the sotan an opportunity to get Klai Yisrael to go off, to go off the derech, to assimilate, to do a virus. The sotan has a power. And sometimes there's a gzera that the sotan has enough power to get done what he wants to do. And it will continue going until we fight it. That's what Chavetz Chaim says. So it's up to Chavetz Chaim. In Europe, what can you do? You have to do tshuva. But in Russia, where they're out for the soul of Klai Yisrael, there we have to stand up with Messias Nefesh, take guns, and go and fight in the Red Square. And he said he would have done it. Chaim Moise didn't let. Zokta Chavetz Chaim, don't think we would have won. We weren't the Hashem Noim. One like they're going to go out to Chavetz Chaim and his Talmudim go fight battle against the Soviet army that he's going to win the war. It's not going to happen. But we would have been machlish the Sutton by the Messias Nefesh that we would have put forth. We would have weakened the Sutton and then the Xavier that Stalin, the Sutton was doing, wouldn't have, wouldn't have carried out. What the war? We would have lost the war. No question. But the fact that they got up and dug in on Messias Nefesh that it would have weakened the Koyach of the Sutton, and then it would have been finished.
That's what Chavetz Chaim said. But Chavetz says the reason why they didn't do it was because you need leaders for everything. And we don't have the same caliber of leaders that we had in those days. The Chashmanoi and So uh, even the Chavetz Chaim felt that you know, we wouldn't be able to go with the same Mesivus Nefesh and the same power as they went forth. But he said, had we gone with Mesivus Nefesh, it would have weakened the power of the Sultan, and that would have been the end of the... the Gzeir would have ended much more quick. There was someone, he says that you should know that we have other ways of fighting with Mesivus Nefesh without taking out the guns, which we don't have the ability to do today. But we have other ways of fighting with Messias Nefesh. It's well known in the, I'm an American, but the, uh, the way uh, back then, the United States of America, they said uh, there was a question of running away from Tsarist Russia to go to America because of all the programs that were going on. So the big Shilas that came to Abhaim Salvech, it came Shilas where the people should run to America or they should stay in Russia. And they used to say, the Rabbonim used to say, it's better to die in Russia than to go to America, well, for sure, no question, for sure they will go off to Derek, and that's how it was. Basically, uh, you know, the film was thrown overboard, and the mess that we have today with assimilated Jews started then, in the <coughs> 1800s, all the way through till after the Second World War, when Tyra started rebuilding itself. There was one man that came to America, Rabbi Yaakov Yosef, Joseph was his name, last name, and he was, came for three years, that was his whole, his whole stay here in America. He came as the Rav Rashi, as the Grand Rabbi of New York, he came, there were thousands and thousands of people came out to greet him, he couldn't get a seat in the show. Three years later, he was Nifter already from Tsaris. He started Kashrus, he revamped the whole Kashrus, putting the plumpers on the chickens, and the uh, and the plumbers on the chickens and the uh, kashrus and the uh, <coughs> it would be a joke. It would say uh, uh, it would say bosser bosser instead of bo kosher bosser. It would say on the signs bosser. It wasn't kosher. It was bosser bosser. That's what they would sell. It was uh, there was there was no semblance of uh, say, there was a vash beforehand. But basically, he came in and the serious nefesh. They mamish killed him. They killed him by making Muhammad on him and Muhammad on him. The Americans, the Mamish killed him and killed him and killed him. He started the schools system. He was involved when he started the Kashra systems. But after he came and was moist through his night and he lost the war. He lost the war. His, his, his uh, final, he got a stroke when he looked up in the big battle against him. They were fighting against him. Someone showed up, uh, had a picture in the, in the, in the butcher shop of a, of a chazer up there, and it said, under the kashras of, of Yaakov Yosef. He saw that sign, it couldn't be served anymore. He had a stroke. That's, that's what it was. And Mamish killed him. Three years. But after that, he was machlish to Satan. That was it. Torah in America started being rebuilt, and kashras started being rebuilt, and today, what we have today is all from his power. Rabbi Hirshman was saying, I was saying about a story, Rabbi Hirshman was saying that the, uh, that the, uh, you know, we have to uh, show that, uh, you know, if, we, if we're weak, if we, if we don't, if we don't uh, go with Messias Nefesh, who's going to follow suit? I just heard a story from Rabelsky. Rabelsky said over, you know, there are places where they're trying to ban Mila today. They're trying to ban Mila. So he said, so he's saying that in the, the first country to ban Shechita in Europe, for the war was Switzerland. So he said in Switzerland what happened, there was a, uh, they, 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 they hired the best lawyers, they went in front of the parliament or whatever they had there, they made the arguments, how kosher was really good and everything. And after all the arguments, it was going to be 95% vote to keep the kashras, to keep shechita. But because of the whole tumult, they had a lunch break. So they went for lunch break and then they came back. And then, before the vote, the other side got up and someone said, I just want to say one thing. Yeah, okay. He says, you know, that lawyer represented a beautiful uh, argument for the Jews, you know, how important it is, kashras. But during the lunch break, they went to the uh, restaurant and he ate lunch in a not kosher restaurant. Mm. So, uh, you know, it can't be that all that important. 
and they voted against the Shkita. So Vilki was saying that, you know, you got to live what you got to live the line. You know, the, the kid, the kid, the, uh, and you show what's important by doing it. So Rabbi Khan is saying like this, that Mesiris Nefesh, we have to go through Mesiris Nefesh in order to win. We have to go through Mesiris Nefesh. It doesn't mean we have to take out the guns. It means we have to be Mesir Nefesh from what we feel is important. Schools are important. Raising the kids properly in Yiddishkeit is important. These things we have to be moist and effish, not to <coughs> go along with the outside culture. Not to go along with the outside culture. We don't have to follow it. Maybe we can't win the battle. In today's world, the web is so important. We can't win the battle. It's impossible. Our kids lost. Our families lost. Marriage is broken up. Maybe we can't win the battle. But we could. We could do a different kind of mysterious nefesh. We could make guidelines in our home. We could fight with mysterious nefesh. We don't have to have the guns out. There are ways we could do it. We don't have to go along with everything the culture tells us is the way to go. And this is the muhammad This is the muhammad that the Muhammad says is possible today. And this is how we win. When we do a battle, we'll be machlash to Yetzirah. And then we'll be, right now we can't win. We can't win necessarily. But we could be machlash to Yetzirah. We'll be machlash to something. Is that something maybe we could take out from uh, from the Hanukkah, from the Mesiris Nefesh of the Chashmanaim? We don't have to go out to battle, but we could go out to battle in other ways. If we hold that learning is important, we hold that it's important, Talmud is important, we tell our kids they have, to, they, have to, they have to learn, apply themselves. But what do we do when we get home? Do we sit down and put our minds on and spend a half hour, an hour on the Gemara? So if it's not, so if you don't need kosher food, so uh, how can you battle in the parliament that they shouldn't ban shechita? If we don't put our lives to it, so how could we, you know, how could we say, oh, this is so important for us? Yeah. Shuls are important to us. You, know, you come to Tfilah some time and spend time in, 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 in Mishas Tfilah. Davening or talking to the person next to you. So, yeah, it's very important. The Yiddishkeit, the fabric Yiddishkeit is very important. But if we don't put the Messias Nefesh out on our part, so how, how, does it, how does it carry over? How does it carry over? So, this is, this is what Abu Khadr is saying, that we could fight the battles. We could fight the battles just putting a little mysterious nefesh on our own parts. In our own parts, in our own system, in our own lives, we could be moist nefesh. For one thing, pick one thing, be moist nefesh for it. Keep it, keep it strong. And with that, we could take a to be machlish to Satan and we could, we could, we could win, go much further, much, much further than we initially intended to. <coughs> 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 <coughs>